Hey everybody, it's the Modern Native here. First off, I wanted to apologize. Kind of bringing, looping you guys in a little late in this. Well, it's a lot of prep work and a lot of setup to get uh, ready to actually do this trip. And still forgot a couple of things. Things have been hectic, I've been trying to figure things out, but uh... uh. So, if you've been cluing in with my other videos, you know that I got a new canoe sitting in it, and I brought it down to the marina I usually fish at to test it out and go paddling around the second daga. But on the way down, my cart broke. So, the test run turned into a rapid deployment. Um, my cart. Well, it's not mine anymore. I'm giving it back to him. I'm not buying something that's not going to work. Sorry, bud. Um, it's more... Anyway. My cart broke. The cart broke on the way down to the marina. I was um, about a half mile away or so. So. Tried to take it easy. Tried to be careful, but... I didn't realize it, but the thing was falling apart a hundred yards from the end of the driveway. So, uh, when I was trying to fix it, I realized that the ball bearing had seized, melted, and crumbled onto itself. The thing was a mess. Um, but I had a couple of cars stop and ask me if I was okay. They weren't big enough to help me out, but they were just making sure I was okay, which was awesome. Thank you, everybody. Uh, but finally, a guy was heading to work, heading into Mayfield right next to the marina. So he picked me up with the cart and the canoe and got me and my stuff down there, and he helped me get it into the water. So cart is a no-go. Um... So, I have been stashing the canoe, hiding it in spots where people can't find it. And all my gear is with it now. Uh, so, looks like you guys are going to be seeing a lot of the canoe, because I'm going to be going back and forth. Um, can't leave this unattended for too long. Don't really have any way to get it home. So. Yeah. So I'm sorry I didn't clue you guys in. As a whole for this video. This whole trip was supposed to be one video. With the prep, the setup and everything else. But. The test run threw me off. So. Anyway. I've just been chilling out. Trying to think about what I want to do. Uh, the wife is supposed to be trying to find a ride to come down to hang out with me overnight. So she can do a little canoeing with me. We can do some fishing, maybe some swimming, skinny dipping. Uh, who knows? I'm um, just trying to have some fun, have an adventure. Um, cool you guys in on some of that. Uh, But, uh, I've got a full setup, I've got extra clothes, I've got extra gear, I have extra food, um, I made a floating fire, check that out on the short, I'll include a clip of it right here, I'll show you guys what it looks like this morning in the daylight, um, Yeah, just chilling out. Heh, <laughs> I didn't even realize you could see the bike in the background. I got that sitting up on the bank for now. Um, if I leave, I usually put it in a canoe, carry it around with me just to be safe. So that way, if I need to, pull up to a new stash spot on another side of the lake. 
stash the canoe, grab the bike, I can head home for something if I need to. Always ready. Um, not to mention, it's an e-bike. It's expensive. Don't really want people to steal that. Um, I could lock it to a tree, but I mean, it's a tree. We're in the country, so banging on a lock for an hour isn't going to bother anybody if they really, really want it. Because, uh, my stepdad, Dave, my dad, he was my dad. He is a good dude. He is a good dude. I haven't seen him in a while. But he had a phrase that he always used whenever I'd ask for a bike lock or I'd be getting a bike or I'd be locking up something up. He'd always be like, locks only keep honest people honest. I was like, well, that's true, but it also keeps lazy thieves away. So it's twofold there. Locks do only work for honest people, but they also work for people who don't want to go through that effort. And nowadays, everybody's lazy, so... Even just a simple lock around the wheel, they're like, damn, can't even roll it. So... I don't know, just some thoughts, sharing some stuff with you guys. This is probably going to be a pretty long video because this is the intro, so... <coughs> <coughs> I hope you guys enjoy. Um, stick around. So this is what's left of my floating fire. <sighs> I was trying to do it laying down. I'm trying to be a little lazy right now. So what I did is there's this big piece of docking foam. There's a whole bunch of it just floating around. This is a flood area that catches a lot of the crap that floats around the second daga. And I took, um, I want to say shale, but I feel like that's wrong. I think it's shale. Slate. I don't know. I can't think of it at the moment. But I took a bunch of the flat rocks and I broke them so that way I had sheets. I laid it across, and then I poured a bunch of sand all over it. I put like an inch or two of sand, and then I made my fire. Um, I think the heat got hot enough that it did go through because that is sitting lower than the edge. So I do think it did end up melting it just a little bit, but it's a mostly fire-resistant foam. I've uh, tested it and burnt some of these, just throwing a chunk on the fire, and it just... It doesn't even, like, light on fire like most foam and plastic, so. I figured it would be safe enough. Stabbed a stick in there, wrapped a rope around it to tie to the canoe, so that way it didn't go too far. And I did the same thing on that side and tied it to the front. Now, it had gotten a little warm up against the side here. So what I had done is I had two longer logs on either side that was pushing it out. And it held it out to about there. It was far enough away, but still close enough. I could still work on it. I cooked bacon on the fire last night. Bacon. So. It worked. Floating fire. If you pack it in a certain way and you unpack it, you can remember which way the opening is going. And the wife and I are camping together, so I want to make sure I have the opening on the right way.
I don't. I don't like it when the hammock drops to the floor, drops to the ground, drags around. So I was trying to make sure to clip it onto me. I love these multi-loop straps because you can always just adjust the height that you need and the tension. Thought I had it, right? Good end of doing it on the wrong side. Good for now. So the wife and I are hanging together, so I went from this tree to that tree. She's gonna go from this one to this one. Show you guys that in a minute. So the wife is setting up hers for the first time. I'm usually the one that set up everything, but she wants to go on her own, so I want to make sure that she can set it up. Unclip it from the clip pass it around the tree it's easier to hug the tree tree hugger get it up about head height a little bit lower not too high baby there you go pass the multi loops through the little loop on the end Because that's what you need to adjust. And yeah, raise it up just a little bit more. Keep freaking falling. Yeah, once you get it tight, it'll be fine. Okay. Yeah, tighten. There you go. <laughs> now just clip it to like the third link. Then run it out. Remember, don't let it fall. I know. You can let go of your strap. It's fine. And I if you... I think I kind of wish I had that snake type thing. The snake skin? Yeah. Yeah, but... Now, unclip it and just clip it right to mine for now. Then just wrap yours underneath mine on the tree. Yep, that looks good. Sure does.
You're going to want it to one side or the other, baby, so don't try to get it centered. Well, it's right here. Yeah, it's fine. As long as it's not slipping. Then just find your tension. You're probably going to put it a little bit lower than mine. I was going to go four to start. Yep, because you're going to want to drop the foot end again. That's way too high, baby. You're higher than me. You need to go shorter. Huh? I have a log. Yes, but the log was to get your legs up and over the edge so that way you weren't pinching behind your knees. Yes. This is backwards. This is backwards, too. It's okay. Just oh, drop shit. it. Uh, three. Two more. That's super low. No, it's not. You need to see it where I'm seeing. When you go to sit down, you're going to realize. That's what she said. Literally. That is what she said. Still kind of damp. Yeah. I forgot yours had a lot more stretch than mine, so put your this no no. Put this end up one notch. That should do her. Yeah, but we'll fix that. This was just a demonstration of how this is your first time setting it up, and it's really simple. Make sure your quilt is actually wrapped around. There we are. Yeah, see? Does that lift the weight off your back of your legs? A little bit, yeah. Nice. It's nicer. All right, step out, strike a pose. You did it. What do you mean, strike a pose? No, no, I was just being funny. There you go. What's going on, guys? I'm just gonna do a quick uh, fire start. Got a bunch of birch bark in here. I'm just gonna throw some sparks at it, see if I can just get it to start. Lazy fire mode. I hate this knife. I had to tighten enough edge on it. I really need to get a bushcrafting knife that has a 90 degree edge on the spine. I keep forgetting. Never go with cheap ferro rods. They're a piece of junk. Sorry, Wayne.
because it shouldn't have been that difficult. It's dry. I literally just got a ton of birch bark in there, so. I made a tiny little fire pit because we're really not trying to get any heat around here. We just need enough to cook, keep the bugs away. Seen any sappy pine cones around? We could throw that on here and it makes a good bug dope right off the bat. Mm. There's no pine cones on the ground anywhere. Go from pine central to leaf central. Yeah, there's not really any pine over here. And only one birch tree. When 200 yards that way, it's all pine trees and birch tree. Made a little stone fire pit just because uh, there really wasn't one over here. I didn't want to dig a Dakota hole. I got my Dakota with me. I don't need to dig the hole. But yeah, literally it's just being smoky. Smoky gets the bugs away and then you just saturate yourself. That's why she just stood in the smoke. Your skin, your clothes, it absorbs it and it keeps the bugs away. If you got pine, it works so much better. Well, because I have asthma, it's horrible and it sucks, but it leaves the mosquitoes away from me, so yeah. So, just with cleaning up the area around here, this area, I happen to have enough wood. I can't get that one. She's been throwing a couple of pieces on here for me. She's been chopping up the wood we got over there. Sexy biatch with a hatchet. But she's been cutting up some wood for me, but there's uh, most of this I picked up from just cleaning up around. And there was enough here to make a really nice cooking fire. It's going to last a <clears throat> She just stabbed the hatchet into the ground after I sharpened it yesterday. Anyway, <laughs> I got a perfect little uh, cook fire going in this nice little fireplace we made so we didn't damage nothing. But uh, awesome. Just wanted to share that with you guys. Look around. Clean up the little wood that falls. You have a lot more wooden than you realize. Keep a fire small, and it's efficient. Hey y'all, just making a uh, some grilled cheese. Look at that, yum. Making a grilled cheese, some grilled cheese on the fire for the wife and me. There she is, all right. And we're gonna have some burgers. Start thawing out, it needs to be cooked, so. I made the bacon last night, making the burgers tonight with some grilled cheese. Gonna have some tomato soup too. So, gorgeous. Stay tuned. All right guys, like I said, now we got the burgers cooking, we got the grilled cheese done. Burnt the last one, but it is so pretty on the other side. It is so pretty on the other side. But, hamburgers are cooking. They're looking juicy, smells like a fair.
Mm-hmm. You like that, baby? Smells like a fair. It does. It smells exactly like a fair. Mm, tasty. Alrighty. Checking with you guys in a little bit. Uh, got the tomato soup cooking. Got the burgers done. <coughs> Grilled cheese is done. Frying pan is cleaning. Filled it up with water, threw it on the pan, threw it on the fire till it boiled. Enjoying. How's your burger, baby? Pretty good. Yeah. It's juicy. Hmm, juicy. Okay. <laughs> Gotta say, some people are dicks. Hey everybody, not a judgmental person, but I feel like that might need a little bit of explanation. So I was heading out on a supply run and I saw some uh, group of guys and a family were hanging out. And I stopped and said hi because they were making jokes about me looking like Crocodile Dundee. And then when I parked the canoe and then show up with a bike, they're like, whoa, pulls up with a canoe, shows up with a bike. So they seemed kind of cool, so I decided to talk to them for a minute. And... I mentioned to the one guy that I have a YouTube channel, and he was like, oh, I don't have an account, but uh, this guy does. And we run around the truck to talk to him, and I didn't even get the full sentence out. Dude interrupted me and was like, no, I'm not subscribing to nothing. Acting like I'm asking to pay for something. It's You click a button, you're done. I don't even care if you watch at this point. Right now, I just need the numbers to boost. And he didn't even let me finish explaining. He didn't let me finish saying nothing. And then he, at the end, he was like, I like to stick in the real world. It's the after the 21st century, dude. We're deep into the 21st century. The real world is digital. Now, I know I'm an, out, uh, an outdoor person saying that, but look at me. I'm on YouTube because that's the way you get shit done now. It's digital. If you had a business and you went to go talk to somebody, whether they were interested in the business itself or not, it's called promotion. You don't shut someone down like a dick in the middle of that. And on top of that, I kind of felt some kind of way. I was wondering, I was like, oh, you know, maybe, who knows, whatever. Started trying to give them the benefit of the doubt, but what do I show up to when I pull back in? They left their trash everywhere. There's cans all over the place. And the dude tore up the place in his truck when it's a dirt bike track. So, yeah, dude, you're a dick. Just saying. Catch you in a little bit. Hey everybody, calling it a night here. Don't have anything interesting for you, but I may be running you guys through a little lesson tomorrow, depending on how we're feeling. Might do a fire lesson. Can you hear the frogs? Of course, now they don't want to make noise like they were. They were going nuts for like the last hour. And then I turn on the camera, and they don't want to do nothing. Assholes. Alrighty, well, I'll catch you guys later. Maybe I'll put out a uh, sleep video if it ends up having some good froggies tonight. All right, everybody, it's day two with the wife. We just came back from a little canoe trip. I didn't tune you guys in yet, but came back from a little canoe trip, went out. Went on a little trip trip to start our trip trip out, so we're just hanging out. Went fishing, didn't catch nothing. Might cook something, not sure yet, but we uh, will keep you tuned. The canoe is definitely awesome, though. Met some kayakers. Hopefully, uh, doing the blue kayak, sorry, uh, didn't get your name. Hopefully, if you tune in, catch, check this. Uh, thanks for tuning in. And we'll catch you.
It just does that. Anyway, you guys can't see us all that much, but you can see my flashlight. I just don't want to blind y'all. Uh, the wife and I hung out on the water all day. Didn't get any filming because I was either paddling or fishing or just chilling. I did throw a little clip out on a short. You guys could probably check that out. What would be a few days ago by the time this loads. But anyway, uh, just checking in with you guys. Hanging out with the wife. can just see her outline in the background. She's so pale, she basically glows. Yeah, see, I can see you flipping me off. I mean, you can see that in the dark. Anyway, you guys have a good one, and I'll catch back with you in the morning. Hey, y'all. Checking in for the morning. Uh, had some cowboy coffee and making some... Yeah, she's got her coffee cup. Got cowboy coffee and uh, growing up some hot dogs for taking out on the canoe for today. We're going to try to make it out to the island. We will clue you guys in for that, and uh, hopefully we can catch some fish. I did catch one yesterday when we were out on the creek. I forgot to mention to you. I got it up out of the water and was like, oh, look at that little bass. And then he flicked off, but, you know, I still count it. He was out of the water. We saw him. She saw him. It counts. One catch. Hopefully we'll do better. We got some crappy chicken hot dogs that neither of us kind of like to uh, use for some bait. And then we got the beef hot dogs cooking on the fire to uh, enjoy for ourselves while we're out there. And then the cowboy coffee right there. Ah, stay tuned. Coffee and dogs with her dogs sticking in the frame. Coffee and dogs. <coughs> coffee and dogs. <coughs> hey y'all. Little tip for you. Uh, totally forgot, I ran out, we ran out of toilet paper, and then I went on a supply run to go and get some, and drinks and stuff, and then I totally got sidetracked and forgot. So, now we have Mewen to act as our toilet paper. Indian toilet paper, cowboy toilet paper. I grabbed a whole stack of it, and, uh, we are set for the night, because we will be getting stuff tomorrow. Just a little tip for you, Mewen. Indian toilet paper. Wilson's chilling out in the canoe, again on Overwatch. Wilson! Alrighty, I'm heading back to uh, do a real quick recharge and then upload what I got. And I will show you guys the second leg of the trip that we're on so far. So, thanks for tuning in. Hope you turn it, tune in to the next bit. Until next time, get out there, be a native, and go beast.